Hey YouTubers, old guy doing things here. Just want to talk to you about the process I just went through to replace my existing router with one of these AX12 routers from that year. The, this video is not an unboxing video. It's not a uh, technical video. These are my experiences about why I need to do a, an upgrade to the router. Uh, what the uh, selection process was that I went through to get the AX12 and to take a look at the installation and the results. And I hope you'll get some, uh, some benefit from that. Now, the reason I needed to go ahead and replace it was that what I had was, was this Netgear WNDR 4500 router and this router had been installed since 2012 so i had a very very good run with this router still running perfectly absolutely no problems with it it's just been bulletproof and on the other end in the garage was one of the wn 3000 netgear uh, 2.4 gigahertz range extenders uh, that has been in there since, since 2015 so that is an absolute eternity to have these uh, technologies in place and to not upgrade. And so the reason I wanted to do the upgrade was because I've got this buddy of mine and what I've got here is we've got the signal goes out this door, through the door and into a garage 160 feet away from here. And you can't see that right now from here, but we'll take a walk over there and take a look at it. But with him beginning to do all of the streaming, he does uh, iPads, uh, iPhone, Roku, and we did away with um, television and with the, we cut the cord about a year ago and finally we need to improve the communications and the, uh, the data communications. Uh, from, from the central location where the Wi-Fi router is over to the garage and where his trailer okay. is. Okay, starting from outside the building, here's where we go, headed for the garage. And that signal from that modem or that router has to travel through here. It's almost line of sight from the doors in the uh, going into the house. And there's my Here's my uh, elderly buddy who uses this service we were working for. And this signal goes over here to the garage, to the window just to the right of the door. And that total distance from the house is right at 160 feet. And the Wi-Fi signal uh, in the house. There's a, an Ethernet cable that plugs into the Wi-Fi extender and goes through the garage over to that, tra that trailer where uh, he watches TV and has uh, all of his uh, iPads, iPhones, and uh, devices that he uses on the, on the Internet. This is what the Netgear range extender sees when it looks back toward the house from the garage. Okay, that brings us to the question of why did I pick this particular router? The main reason was that uh, I had extremely good experience with Netgear. I didn't really see any reason to move off of this uh, particular brand. Uh, I like the software that they use to manage the system, including the old Genie software, that was good. So I'm, I'm happy and I'm comfortable with that. And obviously I wanted the Wi-Fi 6 technology in order to be able to uh, hopefully have this technology stay in place for a while before another upgrade. So those, those were my main uh, reasons for the brand. Now, the particular model I picked because, was because it had a 3,500 square foot large home coverage. And most router manufacturers don't talk about range anymore. They talk about square foot coverage. I was hoping that this square foot, the larger square foot coverage would equate 
uh, to a greater range. And so all in all, it, it, uh, it's worked out fine, and I'll give you the results of that uh, in a few minutes. Now, the implementation also uh, was really relatively easy. Uh, there's a dedicated line between this router and my AT&T router combination, and I have fiber, gig, one gig fiber uh, coming from the AT&T side. And so all I did was basically took the router out of the box, followed the Net Nighthawk uh, application instructions, plugged it in, uh, it fired up, Basically, it was about a 15, 15 minute process. So I didn't see anything difficult at all as far as, as the implementation. Now, one thing that uh, I did run into was that it is not, it was not net backward compatible to an Asus uh, Wi-Fi N card in my desktop PC. So what I did is I, I ordered this, uh, TP-Link AX3000 car, uh, card for my, for my desktop. I put it in, fired it up, it worked fine, and it communicated with the, uh, the Netgear router with no problem. Now let's talk about the results. This is, this is where it really gets, uh, really gets pretty interesting. Let me get, get here where, where you can see this a little better. On the left is the Wi-Fi in. I did these uh, tests before I took it out. The 4500 at 2.4 gigahertz uh, had a 38 megabits per second uh, speed. At 5G, it was 90. And over in the garage, the, uh, the Wi-Fi extender at 2.4 gigahertz was 3.08. So as you see, that was pretty pretty low. And we needed some uh, needed some speed improvement. Now, when I put the when I did the same test on the uh, the uh, AX12, the 2.4 gigahertz speed went from 38 to 52. Now, remember, this is a two technology jump, so this is not impressive. Uh, on the 5G side, it went from 90 to 203. And the really good thing was a major improvement in the garage with the Wi-Fi range extender at 2.4 gigahertz, which went 3.08 to 20. So that was a significant improvement, had a major impact on the performance of my buddy and what he was trying to do and watching Netflix and TV. And of course I did those tests were with speedtest.net. Now, what makes it even more confusing is if you take and you do a speed test using the internal uh, Nighthawk software speed test, it shows 900 on my up and download speed for the uh, AX12 router. So that is a huge, huge discrepancy between what speedtest.net shows and what the Nighthawk uh software shows. So you asked me, where am I on this? Well, I'm really not impressed with the overall performance anywhere except in the garage on the speedtest.net results. And I'm also totally confused as to why there would be that large a discrepancy between the Netgear Nighthawk uh, speed test software and what the uh, speedtest.net is showing. So am I going to keep it? Yes, I'll keep it. I'll now, I, since I just installed it totally vanilla, and since I've come to understand that there appears to be some kind of issues with uh, getting the speed that you need uh, from the AT&T router modem combo over to uh, any router you install, I'll investigate that further. But as of now, these are my results. Uh, I hope it's been some, some benefit to you. And if anybody has any idea why there might be this big a discrepancy in the uh, readings from these two speed tests, uh, please indicate that down in the comments. We'll try to, try to learn from, from your knowledge. Thank you very much.